of IBM. He was an economic advisor to the former President Trump and president and COO at Goldman Sachs. If he doesn't know what's happening or at least give us some insight, we're in deep trouble. Gary's with me now. Gary, first of all, um, let's just get the recession question out of the way. Do you believe that the U.S. will skirt or fall into a recession? Richard, thanks for having me. Look, you're, you're asking the question that everyone's pondering, everyone's debating. There's a big debate here. Can the Fed maneuver what they would call a soft landing? Meaning, can they raise interest rates enough? Can they slow down demand in the U.S. economy in order to slow down the economy enough to ease the pains we're having, but not go too far and put us in recession? That's going to be very difficult. Um, even the chairman of the Federal Reserve yesterday admitted how difficult it is to maneuver a soft landing. That said, you know, if you look at where we are, we've got some pretty good fundamentals standing behind us. We've got a consumer in relatively good shape. We've got corporate balance sheets in great shape. We've got people out spending money. To the extent we happen to go into a recession, I, I along with most people, right. think that it will be very shallow and, and relatively short if we do go into recession. So we turn to this extraordinary dislocation in the markets where we're now in an environment that many youngers won't have seen in their lifetime. And, you know, let's say we just take the Nasdaq, the growth stocks, if you will. Go back to the 90s. It took 15 years for it to recover. I'm not suggesting that would be the same again. But you have to ask this repricing of risk. What do you make of it? Look, we, we almost had to reprice risk. If you think of how we got here. Remember, in the last few years, especially during, during the pandemic, the central banks around the world made money available at virtually no cost. Not only were they making interest rates low and making the, the cost of money cheap, they were actually buying securities to make sure that everything traded as cheaply as possible. Meaning that the risk-free rates of return around the world were paying investors very small returns, if, if no, and, and in some places, no returns and negative returns. That almost forced investors who wanted to re have a return on their money into riskier assets. So many people bought stocks, and they bought the stock market, and they tended to, to buy growth companies, companies that were growing. Those growth companies went up in value, meaning that their earnings weren't growing, but the multiple that people were willing to pay for those earnings expanded. So we had a huge multiple expansion. Now the Fed's doing, the Fed and other central banks are doing the exact opposite. They're taking money out of the system. They're going from buying securities to selling securities. They're going from lowering interest rates or having right. interest rates at zero to raising interest rates. So everything that forced people into risky assets, we're now doing the opposite and telling people get out of risky assets and get into <laughs> so, to the assets that don't have as much risk in them. So what do you do? What does the ordinary investor, I mean, who, who, who's on the wrong side of this, who has sort of now seen the losses, has got the losses and is wondering what on earth do I do now? Well, as, as you pointed out, look, the, the, the NASDAQ has already had a 20 plus yeah. percent correction. The S&P is close. You know, the question is, is the damage done or is there a lot more damage to be done? If you look at the fundamentals of companies and remember, the stock market is a market of stocks. So we're now to the point where you have to look at individual companies. Many companies today are probably priced for a much slower economic growth and, and not priced for expanded earnings. So they may be actually decent value to good value, and you wouldn't want to be selling those stocks. So you have to look at the companies that have repriced and repriced dramatically. There are stocks that are down 50, 60, 70 percent. Those may not be the companies you want to sell. On the other hand, if they're companies that are down 70 percent and they have no growth prospects and they're not earning any, any revenue, you may want to get rid of them. You have to literally evaluate where you are. And if you get out of the stock market, the question is, where do you go? Because buying bonds right now, when you think interest rates are going uh, higher, exactly. bonds will go down as well. So yeah. it's one of those real investment I, conundrums. When you're shifting policy, it's tough to decide where to go. And that, is, and that conundrum goes to the heart of what every 401k has, in a sense, because you were told, remember, shift from stocks to bonds as you get older so you're more secure. Well, now you've got both going down. Yeah. And, and, and you probably will have bonds going down for, for the foreseeable future. You know, the Federal Reserve here in, in the United States yeah. has telegraphed what they're going to do for the remainder of the year. In fact, they almost reaffirmed 
explicitly that they're going to raise interest rates 50 basis points at the next two monthly meetings. So we're going to see interest rates continue to go up in the United States. And we're going to see bond prices go down. So at this point, you probably don't want to rush into bonds. Cash may be a good place to hide for a small period of time. But we know in an inflationary world, you lose purchasing power (laughs) by holding cash. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. But what I love about you, Gary, you always manage to sound, whatever the, whatever the underlying opti- uh, economic optics, you always manage to sound relatively optimistic about it all. Well, look, this is, this is the great country. We've got a great, we've got a great fundamental yeah. basis to work from. We keep creating new companies. We keep solving problems. Like, I look at the problem today. We've got a, a labor shortage in the world today. We've got wage price inflation. So people are now turning to technology solutions to solve their wage problem. So we're going to see a lot more um, investment in technology. We will solve these problems. If you're willing to look in a long time horizon, a long frame, we will do a good job as a global economy figuring our way through this. Markets don't go straight up. They shouldn't go straight up. Things tend (laughs) to get overvalued at the top and they equally get undervalued at the bottom. And you've just got to have a longer term horizon. Gary, good to have you, sir. Thank you very much for coming in this evening. I appreciate your time. Thank you.